Hey, welcome back to Real Pastors. And uh, we're not here for a review today. We're here to talk mm -hmm. some numbers because, folks, we got a hit on our hands. And mm -hmm. not often do we see numbers like this to where we have to make a separate video just to talk about it because a lot of proven points in these numbers of Spider-Man No Way Home. You saw our review. We did a spoiler and a non-spoiler review. Go check those out if you haven't already. George. If you're watching, I know you're waiting. I commend you for that. Hope you get to see it soon, buddy. Uh, but today we're talking the numbers of Spider-Man No Way Home. And uh, without further ado, let me bring in my co-host, Efren, here. Hey, he hey. has brought the numbers to my attention and mm -hmm. uh, some good news out of these numbers for many, many reasons that we will talk about here on this video. Yeah, so there, there's just a lot here. And honestly, I love looking at numbers. I'm always looking at um the box office and stuff like that um, i'm not i'm not like super into numbers like i'm not going to sit here and adjust for inflation and all this other crap that i know other people do um uh, that's just too much math but i like looking at especially with bigger movies to see how they do and stuff and um and what we've come into if you haven't heard yet spider-man no way home has been busting all kinds of records and not just like covid records because for the past two years as movies have been coming back, people have been like, hey, it's reached a new pandemic record. Here's a new pandemic record. And it's been like $90 million, right? Um, it's been stuff like that. It hasn't been anything huge. And so that's what everyone was talking about. And they were just talking about, man, like this is like this could be something really, really cool, really big. Um, and so the one thing that we come out here is that we end up seeing is, and this is coming to us from Box Office Mojo. And uh, I want you guys to see this. So... There we go. That's a little better. Um, so box office mojo here, you know, it kind of shows us everything. If you look right here, this is for the weekend, December 17th through 19th. So this is through Sunday, um, through Sunday night, everything that it made. And what you see right here, number one, Spider-Man No Way Home with 260 million, you know, 260.1 million. Let's just call it at that. Um, so that's what it made. And this is just domestically. This is not worldwide. So it made 260 million. Um, and then you see there, like number two in Kanto, six million, three West Side Story for three million. Ghostbusters Afterlife still in there at three million. And then uh, Guillermo del Toro's new, is that, is that right? Is that who it is? Either way, Nightmare yeah. Alley, two million. Um, and so, so on and so forth. So obviously, Spider Man No Way Home sucked up the entire box office, <laughs> um, blew everybody else out of the water. Um, some of this is probably because of people like me. I saw it three times over the weekend. Um, so there was probably some repeat people there, but, uh, but yeah, so this is what we have here. And then, um, so you see, that's the total gross there. And then what is, what is crazy about this too, is that if we look at international Gary, mm -hmm. um, if I, if I bring this up like this now here, obviously it, it shows you like, here's all the, all the places where it, it came out. And so you see like those numbers there. And then, um, so for the international, you see that it did quite well. Um, now worldwide, if I can get my, um, computer to do what I want. Um, so, so far Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, this actually has, um, changed a little bit. This is updates daily. So this is part of this point. Um, so worldwide 638 million is what it's making so far. Um, obviously there's other stuff in here. Some movies like No Time to Die. It's, it's done with this theatrical run. So it's made, it made 774. That's its entire in theatrical run worldwide. Spider-Man No Way Home is $100 million behind, a little over $100 million behind. And that's just the first weekend. <laughs> so it shows you what kind of hit we have on our hands. And, uh, and what's crazy about it is we have this hit and it still hasn't released in China. It doesn't even have a release date for China yet, which normally that's your biggest market outside the that's US. That, is, that blows my mind. Yeah, exactly. So it's already at 600 million. No China, no Japan, um, no Australia or New Zealand. Um, Australia, New Zealand, and Japan, they all have January releases. Um, so we'll see some of those numbers go up. The Japan, apparently Spider-Man is also a huge, like people in Japan, Jap Japanese, they love Spider-Man as well. Um, and so along with Godzilla, and they even had this whole Spider-Man Godzilla thing back in the day. Um, little tidbit for you. <laughs> but so it'll probably do really well there. It'll do well in the other ones as well. Um, but if it does get that China release, man, this thing will continue to skyrocket. Um, this thing's already looking like a like a billion dollar movie, which is a huge benchmark for any movie. Looks like it's already going to reach that. If it gets that China release, 
we could probably be looking and talking about it crossing that two billion, which now you're looking at Titanic, Avatar, um, Avengers Endgame kind of level. Um, so those are the kind of the numbers that we've have that we have here uh, so far. I mean, what are your thoughts there, Gary? Seeing all this, that's wild. That's wild. Anytime you start talking about, you know, my man Leo's numbers and Endgame up there, you got a hit on your hands. I mean, um, mm-hmm. I knew. I mean, I knew this would be a huge movie, but. Uh, And I knew it when I pulled into the parking lot last Thursday um, and saw, you know, I had to park in the back. And uh, but uh, so I think it is just uh, it says a lot because people want to see good stories. Mm -hmm. And this captivated not only the comic book superhero fans such as us, but also the movie fans, because I think we've gotten to the point where even the casual moviegoers are trusting Marvel to tell a good story because mm-hmm. of their reputation. And to the people out there who are the, the movie snobs um, who are, who say Marvel movies, comic movies have ruined cinema. Um, I beg to differ on so many levels. You probably never even watch one. You have no idea how good the storytelling is. And uh, I'm going to go out and throw this out there. The, these type of movies is, are what's, what is saving cinema right now. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of good movies have come out, but people aren't going out to see those types of movies, unfortunately, in this type of um, droves, I guess is the word. But uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's flabbergasting. It's, it's, I knew it was going to be big, but just the first weekend. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of people who I, I, they wait for reviews to come out to find out if they're going to go see it or not. And mm-hmm. the reviews have been overwhelmingly positive i haven't seen one negative review on the stuff i watch and so i think people are there's going to be repeat viewing such as yourself three Mm -hmm. times that is impressive hats off hats off to you on that one (laughs) i think i'm done uh, till to blu-ray but that's yeah and the people who are uh, waiting um they're you know they've got their reviews to go see it now so i think they're just going to keep going up Mm -hmm. yeah and that's the thing that's crazy because like there's always been this not always, but like during the pandemic, once movies came back, there's always been that excuse of, well, people are afraid to go out. It's not safe. Um, you know, I mean, even with the new variant and stuff of COVID, people are just saying, hey, like, uh, you know, movies aren't doing good because of this. We've, we've seen these we've seen these excuses with Shang-Chi. We've seen it with Black Widow. Uh, we saw it recently with that movie, The Last Duel, um, which mm-hmm. I didn't watch. But like I heard um, what's his name? The director, uh, Ridley Scott. Um, yeah you know, kind of complaining and saying like, you know, these, you know, it's, it's the audience's fault and blah, blah. And it's just like, you know, like we expected things to get back to normal, but there hasn't really been that big hit, right? Yeah. Like this. And yeah. so, and, and here's the thing that is crazy to me is that we're still in the middle of this pandemic, right? We're still all talking about who's vaccinated, who's not. Like we're still talking about the variant. Is it safe? Like there's still all that stuff going on. But we still have this. And here's the thing, Gary. It's still like breaking records. I mean, this is like all time. Okay, so like, look at this. And um, and again, I got it. Sorry, I got to set this up properly. Mm-hmm. But look at this. This is this is opening weekends all time. All time, number one, Avengers Endgame at 357 million. Number two, Spider-Man No Way Home, 260 million. This is, okay, like, and look at the rest of the list. Avengers Infinity War, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Jurassic World. These are all movies that came out during the pre-pandemic era, right? I mean, that's how we're calling it now. Mm -hmm. And Spider-Man No Way Home beat Infinity War and two Star Wars movies. You know, I mean, like, and so this, this isn't something, this has nothing to do with pandemic or anything like that. I think this actually tells us a lot that if you just make a good movie, if you make a movie that people want to see, we're going to show up. I think we've officially hit the point in this pandemic life uh, that we've had that as long as if you make something we're interested in, we're going to show up. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if we look at the pandemic, um, what are the movies that made the most money during the pandemic? Godzilla versus Kong, Mortal Kombat, um, and obviously Spider-Man, No Way Home. And then if you go to pre-print, uh, I mean, yeah, so you have those three at least. There's one, I'm missing one. There's another movie that made that made pretty good money. Um, that people just wanted to see. Oh, Venom, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. That's oh. the other one. Yeah. And so, you know, people are showing up to these movies if you give them something that they want. If you give them something that they want to see. because um, And then the movies that are being complained about, I'm not saying I'm talking about Hollywood, right? Yeah. I'm not saying 
critics or other people. I mean, some critics. Um, but a lot of these movies that they're complaining, like, why is nobody come see this? Oh, it must be, you know, pandemic and stuff. I think this kind of flies in the face of all that, man. It's yeah. like, listen, we if, if you watch our spoiler review, you'll see all about it. But if you give people what they want in a good story, they're going to watch it. And that's what happened with those other movies I mentioned. And then look at this one. I mean, this is this is just crazy. Like it's it's number two all time for opening weekend. I mean, that's just crazy. And look at that list right there. Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man No Way Home, Avengers Infinity War, Star Wars, Star Wars, Jurassic World, The Avengers, Black Panther. <laughs> Movies have become a spectacle. Mm -hmm. um, and Hollywood needs to pay attention to the fact that the everyday movie, the casual moviegoers, they are going to show up, kind of like what you were saying, to see the big movies on the big mm -hmm. screen. Um, is it good? Is it right? Is it wrong? I mean, me and you, we're going to go see anything we're, we're slightly interested in because that's just what we, how we yeah. do things, you know. But movies have become an event theater night out. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you're going to, you need to pay attention to that. If you're going to write, you know, a really good movie and make a big movie, you know, are, are you're giving families justification to go and spend money on that night out to get the babysitter to get, you know, mm -hmm. and if it's a big enough movie and you've invested enough in it, they're, they're going to show up. Right. Um, and do I wish it was the other way? Or do I wish it was all across the board? Like more people went and saw these smaller movies. Yeah, absolutely. I do. However, mm -hmm. it's just, that's not the time we live in. Um, yeah. you know, people are going to sit on their couch and stream those types of movies. Um, heck it's, it's what I do a lot of times when I can't get out, but, People will show up to see the big movies, so mm -hmm. put some put a lot into them. Basically, yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. I feel like I'm rambling. Yeah, well, I mean, it's true. I mean, <coughs> were, you, were you saying that? I mean, look at look at this list, right? Everything on this, every single movie. Like, here's the top ten. I'll lay down to Avengers: Age of Ultron, for the exception of the Lion King, which I think the Lion King's rated G. Everything mm -hmm. else is rated PG-13. I mean, yeah. I just want to put I just want to put that out there. I mean, yeah. because and all these movies, for the most part, especially if you have older kids, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily teenagers, just older kids, you're watching these movies with them. These are movies that like you said, like it's an event the family can go to, a group of friends can go to, right? I mean, and it was funny because like a, sometimes a, the, like some of the movies that have, that have been complained about, like I said earlier, like The Last Duel and stuff, um, those are rated R and have things yeah. that guess what the family's not going to, and especially now with the in the pandemic age that we're living in. Like if you want to make money, you need to make money that you said stories that people want to get out. They go to, they want to see the spectacle. They want to see the big event, but mm -hmm. that they can go to with their friends, with their families, yeah. like something that they can all ex uh, an experience that they can have together. Like, yeah. like Gary, when we went like all three times I saw Spider-Man, the, all three theaters were completely sold out. Not a single empty seat. The one we went to Thursday when I went Saturday with, with my wife and Sunday when I went by myself, completely packed. Um, and it was packed with people. I was probably the only one there by myself, it kind of felt like, because everyone else seemed like they were talking to people. They're like, yeah. it said, it's an event. What do you do with the event? It's you an go event, with, yeah. You go with someone. Yeah. And we are. We are at that point um, because of the pandemic and all that, that if you don't have an event that a group of people or a family can go to, like it, like you said, like, I, like a, a smaller movie, I might as well stream it. Because yeah. I don't need the big screen for it, especially when I have a 70 inch TV downstairs. Exactly. I can watch a smaller movie on that. The, the, the home viewing experience is great, you know, and it's, but like, okay, for example, Nightmare Alley, I don't mm -hmm. know how much about it is rated R. That's the newest movie that came out this weekend too. Mm -hmm. It's probably a good movie. Guillermo del Toro. I don't always get him, but it's got my man Bradley Cooper in it. William Defoe, rated R and profanity rating is severe, mm -hmm. you know? What family is going to go see that? Right. How many people can get their friends together and all go see Nightmare Alley? Because you might have a couple in there and be like, this ain't for me. Mm -hmm. You know, a few years ago, Quentin Tarantino was complaining about Star Wars yeah. uh, Force Awakens ruining uh, The Hateful Eight. Yeah. I'm sorry, Quentin Tarantino, I respect you as a filmmaker, but you're talking Star Wars and you've made a Western that had over 200 F words in it and it was gory for the sake of being gory. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Film buffs, cine cinephiles, well, they'll go see your movie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and you know what? In a lot of cases, rightfully so, because he's a great filmmaker. But you're not going to stand up to what people like you and I, who have families, who have groups of friends that want to go see these event movies. It's just two different things.
Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing that here's what's crazy. It's like rated R movies normally never really did that good anyway. So, mm-hmm. Like family movies are always the ones that have made the most money. And Hollywood has known this. This has yeah. been known for years. But of course, pre pandemic, they still made enough money to justify, you know, that they, they made money. They, they made money back, yeah. right? They made profit yeah. to justify keep making them, right? I mean, you had a couple ones um, like, like It, for instance, and like Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to, there's another that like Radar Logan. Movie, Lo, Logan and yeah. the Joker. Different you know, than those two, but yeah. Yeah, yeah Logan, Joker. So you have some, mm-hmm. you know, movies like that, that like blew the box office wide open. Yeah. Um, but and that's a different audience and stuff like that. And, you know, so... It can be done, but I think Hollywood now needs to take a hard look now that we're in this pandemic age and moving forward, especially with how things are with streaming. And, you know, I know like HBO Max and WB has said, like, you know, starting in 2022, there's no more day and date streaming and theater. Um, they will have the theater window, but it seems like that window, you know, is probably be smaller anyway. So some people might be like, I'll wait three weeks and stream yeah. it, you know, Um so they need to take a good hard look at what kind of movies they are making and are they making them because they want to make them or are they making them because they want to make money or do they want to please the fans? Uh, for instance, like the Sonic movie, right? Remember when that first trailer came out yeah. and everyone hated Sonic's design? The fans, you know, uproared and they fixed it. And guess what? We all showed up to watch it. Mm-hmm. And we actually liked it because it surprisingly was a good movie. Maybe that's why they did the redesign because they, they were confident in their product. But they did it. And, I, and because of that, I took my kids to see it and it made a bunch of money. And now we're getting a second one in April. Yeah, and I so, can't wait. Yeah. And so like, I neither can I. But like, they listened to the fans. Another one, Zack Snyder's Justice League. You know, they finally admitted that that thing got streamed a bunch, mm-hmm. you know, and then the Blu-ray sales or 4K sales, they were number one in sales for Blue K, Blu-ray, whatever, physical media for mm-hmm. like four weeks, four or five weeks. It was number one in sales. So listen, give the fans what they want. And then now Spider-Man, give the fans what they want and we'll show up. We'll be there for it. Pay attention, Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, well said. Maybe, you know, maybe, uh, and I know that the the thought process is as a keyboard in their mom's basement warriors, you know, and not necessarily. These are people that really, we we like good stories. Mm -hmm. We get invested. There's a reason why we get emotional when we see how, Things went down in Spider-Man No Way Home because we're invested in these characters. Mm -hmm. Give us a reason to leave the house. And every person making movies, whether you're an executive, whether you're an actor, your thought should be, I want that person who leaves the theater driving home, I want them to be glad they took the extra step to go see my movie. Mm -hmm. And you do that by not just throwing crap on screen, but you, you invest in the story. You invest in the characters. You invest in your directors, you, mm-hmm. you know, you don't, you know, handcuff. That's for the, yeah. You know? Um, and that's why I was so thrilled leaving no way home. Cause I was like, I think it was the first time in a long time. I did. I kind of felt like, okay, maybe we're headed to a good direction when it comes to movies, mm-hmm. you know, because it wasn't, and we're not going to review the movie, but it was, it was that step in a, in a really good direction of, Oh my gosh, they did what we didn't think they would ever do. They took that step mm-hmm. and they delivered it. They hit it out of the park. Now, I think what you know, what what uh the the possibilities now, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and you got people excited for what's next. And 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 that's the thing like that people like they need to understand, especially now with ticket ticket prices going up, right? Like it's more for a family like um uh, you know, like I still remember um you know, I, I forgot who it was, but someone had comments on one of our live streams, you know, he, oh, oh, Tim Bussey, when he yeah, was talking remember, about, yeah. he, when he was talking about, huh, I don't know, pay $30 for the whole family to watch a movie at home or go and spend $60 on tickets because, you know, he's a family of five, $60 on tickets, you know, tickets, food, all this kind of stuff while we're there, we got to eat out. So like, yeah, people are going to look at things and there's a lot of people in that same boat that they're going to look at things and say, is this worth taking my family to? No. And unless it's a date night, you know, or something like that, people aren't going to come out in droves anymore, but they'll come out in droves for the right movie, mm-hmm. you know, with, with the right plot, with the right story, the right characters. Um, you you got to give us something worthwhile 
or th now people just aren't going to show up. They're not, people want to be extra safe. I mean, look at because of the pandemic, you have drive up now everywhere, you know, your DoorDash, things like that. There's all these things that Which are now my in place. introvert self loves, by the way. Ex exactly. You're proving my point. There's a lot of people like that. And so if, like you said, if you're going to go out of your way to go to the theater, to be around people in a packed place, especially mm -hmm. after you had two years of bliss, because you didn't have to deal with that. It's got to be for a reason. And, 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 and I think Hollywood needs to, needs to either just get used to the new, what I think is going to be the new norm, unless it's these kind of movies. Just you know, lower your budget then so you can actually make money. Because moving forward, man, unless you do something that's an event. Again, those movies I said, Mortal Kombat, Godzilla vs. Kong, Venom vs. Carnage, you know, Let There Be Carnage, Spider-Man No Way Home. Like, unless it's a big event that you can't, see at home or you'll be mad if you did you have to see it in the big screen people aren't showing up you know like i'm not going to an imax showing of uh house of gucci yeah yeah exactly or whatever you know just story a story about people that's not spectacle no i'm not going to see that yeah. you know I'll, I'll see dune on imax like you know like there's got to be something there Thanks. yeah i will i will rub it in <laughs> we all know we all know it's your wife's fault we'll just keep blaming yeah. her it's your fault megan <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and i think back to um the word that keeps coming to mind is event mm -hmm. you know people will go, like remember when endgame was coming out we all worked at the say we worked at the same church back then mm -hmm. how many people were gathered in my office trying to get tickets oh it yeah. was a collection of different ages different you know um stages of life different mm -hmm. You know, you don't get much different. It was like me, you, Dom, Denzel, uh, you know, people that watching, who, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Snow was all, peeking in. Y'all get tickets yet? Like, we're trying to get in-game tickets. And we we wanted to see it so bad that our good buddy Dom actually went with my wife and I to go see it because that was how hard it was to get tickets, yep. you know? And yep. and that, that's the feeling. That's where people are now, you know? They're mm -hmm. going to go the extra mile for the special movies. Yes, they are. And and that's and that's what we we got to see. Like this has got to be a signal. Like it's not that people don't want to go to theaters. I just think Hollywood that people just didn't want your product. Yeah. You know. I mean, we we've seen now, and 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 like, and I don't want to get political or anything, but look at the movies that I mentioned: Godzilla vs. Kong, you know, so on and so forth. Spider-Man: No Way Home. There's no agenda in any of those movies. Mm. Th there's no preaching. There's no nothing. It's just a good story, fun escapism, and just having a good time. And, and and I'm sorry, like pay attention to the people. We have spoken. We have spoken with our wallets. Mm -hmm. We just want we just want a good fun event, a good fun time at the movie, good story, good characters that we can just have fun with. We don't want to be anyone preaching at us. We we don't want we're trying to escape from the world around us. We don't want it in our movies. And our uh, our AMC uh list is going to look very odd when you go through this past year and yeah. it's like marvel movie marvel movie comic book movie big movie and then there's going to be one missing because we we should we we didn't want to you know mm -hmm. pay to see the woke message that we heard one was bringing you know yeah. and that's where a lot of people are yep i know and it's just like like we don't really want to dive too deep into that but no, just no, but like I, it just for me it's like hollywood man we, we want to have fun Going to the movies is supposed to be a time for us to escape from the world. Yeah. Just just take us to a new world so we can have fun there, you know, and just enjoy it. Like Av the movie Avatar. I didn't care for that movie, but it was gorgeous. It was. Story was normal. But hey, they took me to a different world for three hours. You better learn to love Avatar because we got nine more coming soon. Oh, dear heavens. I don't know what <laughs> else you can freaking you can do with that. that. For like 13 years. Yeah, that's also true. But I mean, that's... That's just what we want. Spider-Man has proved it again. And I want to say, I mean, this is the second one this year that Sony, you know, yeah. has done well with. And, you know, same kind of thing. Hey, we're going to make a fun movie for the fans. Mm -hmm. Good job. You know, and I'm not saying it always has to be about the fans because if you have a new story to tell, tell and it. then tell it. But just let it be fun. That's what yeah. we want. We want to have fun at the theater. And that's what's going to get us there. Well, it's what it used to be. It used yeah. to be fun. And then wasn't <laughs> yeah and maybe it's starting to be fun again that's what i was trying to say earlier when we're leaving the theater is like this is fun again maybe this is the fun again yeah um we'll see so while we're on the topic 
and mm-hmm. we, this might be our last Spider-Man. Well, no, because we're going to do a, a ranking at some point, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you want to talk briefly, and it's going to have to be briefly on my end because I'm starting to get delirious, and when I start to ramble, you yeah. know how things happen. But uh, what do you think, just briefly, what do you think the future of Spider-Man is? Um, I will say I think uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, because uh, I'll let everyone here know, Gary, I texted you this earlier. What I realized is that they basically did an origin story with mm-hmm. this movie, yeah. which is yeah. great because it, it was very like, it, it almost felt like they took a whole trilogy and Civil War and you know Infinity War and stuff to tell the origin story of Spider-Man. We really yeah. got to dive deep into his character, into Peter Parker, into Spider-Man, all that stuff. And then because of the ending of the third movie, which go watch our spoiler review, Please so do. you know what we're talking about or just watch yeah. the movie. Um, but which you probably did with those numbers. But anyways, yeah. um, I think George is the only one that has yeah, it. probably poor George. Poor George. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, but like now they can take it anywhere. It's like, so we had this whole origin that, that, that has been done and now the origin story is done. So now they can tell whatever story they want. One, he has the proper costume. Thank God. I'm so yeah, excited I thought that for that. Was cool. And then I, now I was watching, I was like, I'm a reference loving this down there. <laughs> oh yeah. I was, I said it out loud. Finally, comic <laughs> accurate costume. I'm so happy. Um, but yeah, so it's like, you get that and then you get like, you know, what, what happened? He, he, now he is no longer iron boy. Yep. Now he's finally spider man. And now we can do something with, it. I just hope they do continue. Cause now I do want to see more. You mean, everyone knows how I was, I was on the fence. And if I was going to be on board, now I'm on board. Now I want more. Give me more. Show me what he can do. Keep pushing him. Um, and so they and they can really tell whatever story they want. Look at all I'm saying is look at the comics, man. You already have your storyboard done. Look at the comic books. Mm-hmm. Pull a story. Make it happen. You, you, the possibilities with the decisions made. You know, spoiler with Peter Parker and all that. Mm-hmm. There's so much he can do. And you're right. Mm-hmm. And when I realized, and, I, and a reviewer pointed that out as I was, I was like, this whole trilogy plus Civil War was his origin story. Mm-hmm. That is fascinating and so cool how they did that. And yeah. because of the decision, how No Way Home ended, he can go do all kinds of things because all the people he's already interacted with, the villains, Michael Keaton's character, mm-hmm. you know, they don't know who he is. <laughs> yeah. They know Spider Man. Yeah. You know? So there's just so much that they can do. And, uh, it's exciting. I think Tom Holland's going to take a little bit of a break, but it's exciting to see what, what would become next, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully they, uh, they, they stick the landing. Yeah. So, you know, so hopefully they did, they did with this movie. Hopefully they'll continue that moving forward. And, and be on the lookout for some time. Uh, what do you think? Maybe late January after uh, the new trilogy or the 4k for the original trilogy comes out, we're going to mm-hmm. do a rewatch and rank of the Spider-Man movies at some point. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to. Um, I want to do a proper rewatch though, because I have not watched those originals in a long time. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have to we'll have to figure that out. But yeah, we're gonna have to do that. I mean, this is this is crazy. Probably like you said, maybe with the 4K release whenever that comes out, mm-hmm. um, we can get pick that up and then do a proper ranking. Because um, I will say, after watching it three times, I did end yeah. up liking it a little bit more because I was able to notice yeah. certain things that they did. Um, I'm still trying to see if it belongs on the Mount Rushmore of, of great comic book movies, but, uh, I don't know, man, it's, it's inching, That's it's inching right ever now. closer. It's inching yeah. ever closer, man. Yeah. In that dark night territory and yeah. Yeah. In yeah. that dark night territory, especially now that I realize the origin story thing, Yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, cool. okay, this is a little bit more brilliant than I originally yeah. thought. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that's all I got. You got anything else before we close? That's it, man. Just make sure, hey, if you haven't yet, subscribe to us so uh, that our fan base, our community can continue to grow and uh, leave a comment, your thoughts about any of this, Spider-Man, you know, anything we talked about, why it made so much money. We'd love to hear from you guys and make sure to like and turn on the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Yep. And going to look out for our Matrix review coming up later this week. Yep. Can't wait for that one. Yep. So we're looking out for that. All right, everyone, you have a good night or day or whenever you're watching this.